It's Money Monday, a segment here at 4 o'clock where we talk about easy to understand ways to navigate our finances. We do it with the help of our financial expert, Paul Hood from Hood CPAs. Paul, good to see you here on this holiday. How are you, my hey, friend? You too, Brian. Having a good weekend? I am. I am uh, working some cows, having a good time. All right. We have some great questions today. We start with Corey. Corey wrote in saying, my wife and I have been able to aggressively pay off debt the last couple of months. We also don't want to miss out on some great opportunities to invest. Uh, we've had this question a few times now. Paul, what do we do here? Is it better to continue paying off debt rapidly or more beneficial to do a little bit of investing? Well, it's, it's kind of the same answer I've given a few times. And Brian, what we try to teach people is you have to change your pattern of thinking. And so regardless of how much debt you're in or, or what if, or debt you're not in, then you need to be saving the first 10%. So the answer is yes, you need to do both. But I would save, I would work up to saving at least 10% of what your gross um, collections are, your money, that you, your paychecks or whatever your net, and then live on the other 70 to 80%, including debt payoff. Why is that important to do? Uh, I know we, we tackle this question a lot on this show. Uh, why is it important to do both? Because in your mind, you would think, gosh, I got to pay off this debt quickly. Uh, but you also want to be investing too, right? Right. So, um, you know, I talk about a lot about a book called um, The Richest Man in Babylon. And he, in this book, it's a story-based book that you have to change the decision-making patterns that you have. And you people are in debt because of the decisions they've made up to that point. And so by forcing yourself to save, you're also forcing yourself to live on less than what you make. So you're forcing yourself to live below your means. Um, and so, if, if, because we've had experience with people that would go and just pay off debt, um, but then, you know, five years later, they're back in debt. So we have to change those decision-making patterns. All right, good point. Paul Tammy writes in asking you a question saying, when do you know it is best to just throw in the towel and file for bankruptcy? What things should be taken into consideration in the short term as well as long term? Well, you know, uh, what I would say to her is that that may be a, a question to ask an attorney, but from a financial standpoint, you just got to see, you know, I would sit down with somebody and see is the hole too deep? Um, and then what type of debt do you have? Because a lot of times you can go in and you can negotiate and restructure things and keep yourself from filing bankruptcy. But oftentimes I mean, the bankruptcy laws were put in there to, to protect yourself, especially if you have your own business, and, you know, the, to protect business owners for, to, to encourage risk. So um, it's, that's really kind of a legal question, but I would look at, at how deep is the hole and how long will it take us to uh, dig out of it. A lot of folks out on the water this weekend. Adam has a timely question, says, my wife and I really want to get a boat, but we hear nightmare stories about the upkeep and the maintenance. Do you have any concerns about such an expensive purchase and the money associated with it long term? Well, uh, once again, Brian, I would tell if you're saving 10% and you're living on 70 to 80%, then, uh, then go for the boat. You know, I wouldn't, you got to have a balance between enjoying life, but also making prudent uh, financial decisions. Uh, my experience is, is uh, the upkeep on the boat and the maintenance and the gas and everything. You're probably looking at, at about 20, 25% of what you're paying for the boat on a monthly basis. So um, cash flow, if you can cash flow it and still maintain uh, living between 70 and 80% of what you make, then, then go for it. But you do have, that's a smart question to, to consider the upkeep and, and the maintenance and the gas, because why have a boat if you can't put it on the water? Yeah, Paul, my free advice on this, find a friend with a boat. <laughs> Amen. That's a good good advice. That's right. Pitch Paul, in 20 bucks and go have fun. Right. <laughs> Paul, it's great to see you here uh, on this holiday. And listen, if you're watching right now, you have a financial question you'd like us to ask Paul next week. All you have to do is just send in a quick email to moneymonday at griffin.news.